healing and it's time for Emily's Energy Corner. First of all, if you have any questions or suggestions, shoot me a line, Emily A. Francis, that's with an I-S, at gmail.com. Don't be afraid to reach out. Today's guest, I totally loved her, Lauren Walker. She's the author of several books, but this book, The Energy Medicine Yoga Prescription. And uh, I, I suggest you run run to the store and go get this book. Uh, she's an award-winning author. She's written several articles for Yoga Journal and New York Times and all kinds of neat, neat places. She's fantastic. And I really loved the way that she approached our healing and our... Um, are, are the way that we situate ourselves inside our bodies. We talked about that it's a delight, or it certainly can be. It's a delight to live inside your body and to be in this earth realm and to live your life. And I, I think that sometimes we get so sidetracked that we forget how magical that this time is in our lives to be alive right now. It's chaos, and it's uh, the world is changing and shifting, and chaos is required for that shift to occur. occur. And it's important to be a part of the conversation. But that conversation really starts inside yourself before you can really be a strong part of dialogue out into the world and make a difference. And I was talking about this just recently, or just the last segment on this show. And I've, t I've thought about when am I going to share this story on the Energy Corner because I knew at some point I would. But today, it seems like the right day. Last A couple of weeks ago, I was flying uh, somewhere and um, I was in the airport bathroom. I decided, oh, i got to run to the bathroom before they start boarding. I don't want to get on the plane and then have to go potty. So I went to the bathroom. I was the only person in there. And then a TSA agent walked in and she went to the bathroom and she came to the sink at the same time that I was washing my hands. And she started washing her hands. She looked at herself square in the mirror, in her eyes, and she muttered under her breath, and she said, I look so fat, oh. and did this audible exhale that like locked it into the cells that this is what she's affirming. And then she was looking at herself in the mirror, and she's making these faces at herself. And I don't think she realized that I was there or that I was going to say anything, but I turned and I looked at her and I said, you look fantastic. And she was embarrassed, you know, and I, I walked up to her face to face, eye to eye, and I said, you know, if something happened to you, you're going to wish that you looked exactly like you do right now, today. You know, a lot of times people forget that if you lose an excessive amount of weight, it's usually an indicator that something's wrong. And we forget that because all we're thinking is we want to be a certain weight, we want to look a certain way, and then we'll be happy, which is totally not true. But if you do have like a healthier, a healthier weight and body, yeah, you, you might feel happier because you feel more comfortable in your body. And that's true. But it's not about the numbers. It never was. And it's not about what you look like or what other people perceive you to be. And it's always going to be really difficult to change the dialogue within because somewhere along the lines, someone... It always is outside of yourself, that dialogue changing. When we're children, we love ourselves. I ask my, my little girls every day, you're so beautiful. Do you know how beautiful and lovely and smart and creative and precious and how miraculous you are? You're incredible. And they'll go, yes, I know. And they never think anything of it because that's the, that's the dialogue that I'm having with them. They know that they're precious and beautiful and wonderful and amazing and smart and creative and all the things I can think about. And... I don't say those things to myself enough, but I certainly say them to my children. So when the woman was looking at me and I said, you know, you would, you really would miss what you look like right now. You would wish that you look like you do. And what I said to her was, you are beautiful. You are strong. You are powerful. And it's time to change that dialogue. And she just looked at me and she said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're right. And she got teary. But when I left the space, I almost started crying because it pained me in my body to watch what affirmations can do when they're when they're negative, when, they, when you're turning them around. Because when we think of affirmations, we think of really positive statements that we're trying to subscribe to. That's what I think of when I hear the word affirmation. But that woman taught me firsthand that affirmation can go both ways. And that you can affirm a poisonous statement and your cells and your muscle memory and the emotional side of your body and the subtle body, that energetic body, it locks into itself those affirmations. 
and especially the negative because you believe them. So if you're looking at yourself and you're making eye contact into the mirror and you're giving this affirmation that is so, so hurtful to yourself, to your body, to your life, to the energy patterns that your body is, is currently in, you're changing the flow. You're, you're taking that really sad little voice that, that, that is the, the non-believer in goodness in your life and you're letting that voice become the loud one. You're letting it come to the forefront and then you're letting it take over. And then when you hear it out loud and you make eye contact with yourself and you do this audible breath, you're locking it into your system that that's what it, that it's not just a belief anymore, that it's fact. And your body believes what you say. Your body truly does because your words are powerful. And I know that we know it, especially you guys who, who listen to this show all about healing because you guys are interested in healing. It's a part of your life. I know the demographics that are here, and I'm so thankful, and I'm going to just make a, a blanket assumption that you don't speak to yourself like that. But it's not just about you speaking to yourself that way. It's also blocking others when you hear it. I could have just sat there and put my head down and washed my hands and said nothing and had all these thoughts in my head, but why would I do that? She's a sister. She's a, she's a woman on this planet. She's a human. That makes her my sister. That means I, I owe it to her as the part of myself, the energetic connectedness, to tell her it's time to change the dialogue. Because it is. We have to be mindful. Everything that you say and do, whether you say it out loud or you don't, it all matters. And your body is listening. And, you know, there's such power in that, and you are the one that gets to choose in every moment of every day how you want to utilize that power. Is it going to be power that turns into something positive and healing and, and delightful so that you can live inside your body and realize that, oh my gosh, I'm here on this planet right now in a body, and I want to use it, and I want to use my voice for good, and I want to, do, I want to try to make a difference in this world. What is it that you want to be doing? You know, I don't know that I want to be on a big stage. I can't decide. I, I was out of town yesterday at the World Massage Festival, and I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. And I got to speak there. And it's exciting because they're my people. And it was really neat to sit around all these people that have such invigorating conversations about body healing and all the research and all these things that they know. They were brilliant. And I was just giddy inside thinking, yes, I'm with my people. But it also meant that I had to leave my children. And I'm that's not really where I want to be totally at this point in my life. So it's, it's me doing a little bit of taking stock of what's the most important things in my life and making sure that I honor those. And that's a dialogue. Your dialogue, your expressive nature and who you are, it's important. And it leads the way to your healing or to the poison that can grow inside you. And I, I offered that little part about myself, just taking stock, because it's important to know where you are in your life and where you want to be going. And you need to be in alignment with it. I do want to speak and I do want to share my truth and I have a lot to say. But I want to bring my kids along with me for the ride because they also deserve to know that you can do and be anything you want to be in the world. And I want to, I want to show that. I don't want to tell it. I want to show that to them. I want them to know that anything is possible because it is. And, and we are the only thing blocking ourselves from, from greatness, whatever that greatness is to you. So today, for the Energy Corner, your homework is to change the dialogue. If you look at yourself and you think anything negative, stop. Stop what you're doing. Step back. Take a look and realize you are sexy and magnificent and powerful and such a beautiful, important part of this world. And you matter. And that is the dialogue that I want to see you stick towards. But I need you to believe it because it is true. And we all owe it to each other to lift each other up and to be there for each other. And if you find someone that's hard on themselves, be the voice for them today instead of listening to their negative voice. Be their voice and allow healing to occur everywhere that you are because that's our birthright, okay? You guys have been listening to All About Healing and please don't be afraid to shoot me an email. Like I said, emilyafrancis at gmail.com. Please make it a great week. You guys, we'll see you back here next week.